A flimsy inflatable dinghy full of migrants is adrift in the open sea, around 30 miles from the Libyan coast. They have no fuel, no water and no food. They've been detected by a Spanish NGO. Most of these migrants have never seen the ocean. They can't swim. And after hours at sea in the sweltering heat, they're exhausted. This boat has just arrived with about 500 migrants who have been rescued trying to make the very dangerous journey from Libya to Sicily. So far this year, more than 80,000 people from different countries have arrived. Around 2,000 have drowned. But the vast majority are not refugees fleeing war, but those in search of a better life. Most will stay in Italy. Sympathy for the migrants is wearing thin. And blame is starting to focus on the NGOs saving lives. There are critics who have accused NGOs of acting as a taxi service to Europe. Io la penso così. <coughs> there are fears now that anti-immigration groups are exploiting the crisis for their own ends. So you'd like to see this mosque closed? Yeah, I maybe would like to see a museum or something else. Tensions here are rising. But what is the solution to Italy's migrant crisis? This is the gateway from Sicily to the rest of Italy. A short passage for many towards their new lives. This is the route that hundreds of thousands of migrants follow to get to the mainland. Many of them end up in the north, but some are being settled in the south of the country. I'm on my way to one of those towns. In this quiet corner of Calabria, for centuries the locals have only spoken Italian. But in recent years, Riace has suffered from an exodus of people in search of jobs and better prospects. And things are changing. Hello, ciao, how are you? Today, the trip is not a typical reality realtà the profound sud Italian, because they si are on the streets persone che provengono da oltre 20 nazionalità diverse. Today over half the population are new arrivals from Africa and the Arab world. Chiave di soluzione di una di una comunità di una comunità del profondo sud italiano che non aveva una una prospettiva per il futuro. The Maze initiative with government and EU money is breathing life into his town and providing a haven for recent arrivals who have endured much to reach here. These young men of 16 and 17 are from the country which makes up the second largest number of migrants to come to Italy this year, Bangladesh. I think Italy is the best of the world because some people gave me food, gave me a house, gave uh, clothes. When I was Bangladesh, I don't buy this. The boys told me they never intended to come to Europe, that they had paid people smugglers to take them to Libya for work. But when they got there, they became their victims. Bought and sold from one trafficker to another, the boys managed to finally get onto the boats for Italy. But their ordeal wasn't over. About 1.30, 40 plus. It was a small boat. 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 
देख फिर जब उठाया हम लोगों को सिर में दो आदमी मर गए Not everyone is welcoming to migrants coming to Europe. This is a promo video from a group calling themselves the Identitarian Movement. Made up of mainly young tech-savvy members, they've been described as the hipster right. With headquarters in Austria and France, they're a small but growing group, and their aim is to campaign against immigration. Senior membership of the group is known to have had links with neo-Nazis. Their annual camp is all about physical strength and fitness, but with a definite sense of purpose. Stop immigration! Stop! Stop! Stop immigration! This summer, the movement tried to stop an MSF rescue ship from leaving port. The stunt ultimately failed, but in just a few weeks the organization raised over 70,000 euros and they have now chartered a ship they say they'll use to disrupt trafficking and monitor the NGOs in the Mediterranean. I had heard that the group was developing plans for further action in Catania. Their Italy coordinator Lorenzo Fiato has flown down specially from Milan. We want to defend Europe from mass immigration and multiculturalism. We think that in every city where multiculturalism is present, uh, is also radical Islam and also uh, violence regarding illegal immigrants and more. So you want European culture, Western societies to just be white? It's not a matter of white. It's a matter, as I said, of multiculturalism. This is a different kind of migration. These are thousands of illegal migrants coming to our shores and uh, uh, flooding into our cities. Lorenzo told me that it wasn't just new migrants that concerned him. His organization has a policy of repatriation for the children of existing immigrants. You want these people who live in Europe who have been second or third generation to go back to the home country of, of their own parents? I want, I want them to um, respect our way of life of life. That's simple. And the people who respect your way of life? Sorry, the problem is not about them, but most of them maybe uh, have some parents or friends or people who are related to them. So I, I, I can't trust anyone in this matter. But Lorenzo's first goal is to combat those he sees as facilitating mass immigration, the NGOs. You say you don't want the NGOs operating in those waters, that you want them to stop. They say that if they do stop, more lives will be lost. No, I think this is false, because these people are coming to Europe because they, say, they, they know someone will save them. You can't solve this problem by helping the human traffickers doing their jobs, because they want to transport illegal migrants. So you are just helping, their, helping them. There's been another rescue, this time by the organization Save the Children. An inflatable carrying 125 people has been located off Libya. It's been at sea for 24 hours. It's beginning to deflate and is taking on water. 25 children are on board, four babies and several pregnant women. And there are fatalities. Four people die. One, the mother of a 15-month-old baby. The ship comes into the port of Trapani in Sicily. It's where a local prosecutor is investigating whether some NGO ships may be facilitating illegal immigration. Io credo che questo sia uno dei problemi più gravi che nella storia dell'umanità si sia verificato forse dal Medioevo ad oggi. Chiunque dica che è di facile soluzione secondo me è quantomeno superficiale, in molti casi è in malafede. The NGO missions are coordinated by the Italian Coast Guard. 
But the country's legal system has launched two investigations into whether they're saving lives or merely assisting illegal immigrants on their journey. Il loro scopo unico è umanitario, salvare le vite umane. Questo comporta a volte delle condotte che sono violatrici di leggi nazionali. Do you feel that by rescuing these boats that the NGOs are somehow encouraging uh, the people smuggling trade? Certamente sì. E spinge i trafficanti a imbarcare questi immigrati su imbarcazioni sempre più fatiscenti, poco sicure, perché hanno la certezza che dopo poche miglia saranno recuperate dalle navi. There are critics who have accused NGOs of acting as a taxi service to Europe. Io la penso così. <coughs> the NGOs argue that if they weren't operating in the area, more lives would be lost. E comunque ne morirebbero molti di più di quanti non ne muoiono attualmente. Back on the quay, the Save the Children ship is preparing to continue its mission. Since last September, the Vos Hestia has rescued more than 4,000 migrants at sea, including over 500 children. Hi, David. I asked the captain what he thought of claims that NGOs were acting as a taxi service to migrants and people smugglers. Yep, yeah, I've heard that before, and, and I think I can see why people say that but the evidence is absolutely to the contrary. You only have to see the craft they put them in to realize how utterly cynical and ruthless they are. There's, they don't need a pull factor. They're pushing these people out, come what may, and if we're not there, they will drown. I mean, what's the solution here? Because the numbers aren't dropping at all. The solution obviously is a political solution. It's not, it's not within the remit of a humanitarian organization to solve this ultimately, but people will continue to do this unless and until there is a safer legal way to do it. In the meantime, this tragedy will go on unfolding and we will continue to pick up the pieces and we will continue to get the blame for something that only other people can solve. I'm sorry, it's, that's, that's how it is. Back in Catania, Lorenzo has an important day. Sono davanti all'entrata della stazione, cioè dove c'è proprio l'atrio e sono davanti al colonnato. He's waiting for some new identitarian recruits who have come from the Sicilian capital Palermo. Come va? Hello. Hi, hi. Viviana and Claudia are university students and they come to help on the Defend Europe launch. Lorenzo said he'd take me on a tour of the town. All these restaurants, they're all owned by sort of migrants and people. Yeah, yeah, most of them, especially, you know, the kebab, they're, they're easy to, to organize, easy to do. Uh, and uh, the food is not so healthy. They, they grow up like, like, like rabbits. They grow up like rabbits? <laughs> what do you mean? It's like saying that uh, there are a lot of them and they continue to, uh, you know, appear. They are, uh, you know, literally uh, replacing the people living in these neighborhoods. We are always less and there are always more. This is, a, this is one of the mosques. This is a mosque. mosque. What do you think when you see this mosque here? I, I mean, I do not feel hate because uh, Islam is okay if it's in, in Middle East or in, in some other places. I just know that this is not the place for a mosque here. That sounds Islamophobic. I want to prevent this actually. But if you want, you to, want prevent to prevent it, Islamophobia. I want to, I want to prevent hate and fights. Uh, and the, the clash of civilization I just told you. So you'd like to see this mosque closed? Yeah, I maybe would like to see a museum or something else at their place. As we sat down, I wanted to find out why Viviana and Claudia had joined the movement. Più del 90% degli immigrati che arrivano qua con i barconi sono immigrati economici. Come anche noi italiani eh, soffriamo povertà, crisi e quant'altro, non siamo messi nelle stesse 
eh, situazioni, non, le nostre esigenze eh, valgono forse anche meno di quelle loro. Per Claudia it was something more personal. L'italiano è famoso perché approccia spesso le donne, e le corteggia. Invece mi è capitato con alcuni immigrati, credo, eh, che mi guardassero in modo strano fino a farmi appunto provare paura, senza proferire parola. Quindi io penso che la differenza culturale si stia proprio in questo, che appunto loro non sono, non sono abituati a vedere una donna anche leggermente scosciata. There are accusations that uh, this is a, a racist group, an islamophobic group, uh, a group that's linked to neo-Nazis. Secondo me è sbagliato comunque identificarci come fascisti, nazisti, cioè non ha alcun senso, sono parole che rimombano da persone che non sanno nulla né del fascismo né del nazismo e che vogliono solamente screditarci con paroloni che fanno paura perché non tollerano di fatto eh, diciamo, le opinioni degli altri. So what do Sicilians think of Lorenzo and his friends, their movement and views? I wanted to see him in action. Questi migranti che ci sono qua, alcune persone hanno perso il lavoro. Cioè alcuni di voi hanno perso il lavoro per questo? Amici che conosco io, un mio parente ha perso il lavoro perché giustamente sono preso un immigrato, giustamente dagli di poco, e hanno licenziato lui. E purtroppo l'immigrazione ci sta consumando a tutti i morti l'immigrazione, perché sono diventati i padroni proprio della nostra città, e loro i migrati. Lorenzo sees the chance for a bit of PR and tells the man about blocking the NGO ship. Ci dobbiamo dare proprio un fermo a questa cosa qua. Ci dobbiamo stabilizzare tutti quanti. Non sono razzista, mi fanno tenerezza, mi fanno pena, però insomma a noi non ci aiuta nessuno. Ho capito, ho capito. Noi aiutiamo tutti, ma noi non ci sta aiutando proprio nessuno. But it's not just ordinary Sicilians who feel their voices need to be heard. Across Italy, you see scenes like this. Nigerian women forced into prostitution. It's thought that a staggering 80% of Nigerian women who come to Europe are trafficked. Three years ago, 1,500 Nigerian women arrived in Italy. Last year, it was more than 11,000. I went to meet some who were lucky enough to be rescued. Jennifer and Anna, not their real names, told me their stories began in Nigeria, where they were offered work as babysitters and hairdressers in Europe. They agreed, but on the drive through the desert towards Libya, things started to go badly wrong. At midnight, they brought a car again, and that was how we started our journey in the desert. Throughout the desert walking, there was no food, no water. So each checking point that we have to pass, we have to pay money. And if you don't have money, they have to sleep with you. Throughout those checking points, I and my sister were being slept with to pay our money just to pass. When you got to Libya, that's when you realized they wanted you yes. to do prostitution? Yes, she called and she said that uh, it was not the visitor, that it was prostitution. And I was so hungry. That was when the girls were taken to what's known as the Carnation House. That place, they call it Carnation House, is a place whereby May comes to sleep with girls. The girls are always inside the house. It's like a cage to you. And how many other girls were there with you in that space? Countless, many girls. Were you talking to each other? Yes. What were you saying? Uh, I was just saying that one day, one day, we'll get to you. One day, we'll get to you. But once they arrive in Europe, many find they cannot escape. They still have to repay a debt to the traffickers and the debts are huge. Up to 40,000 euros. So they remain in virtual slavery. It really is quite difficult for these girls to now go back home. They have no ID and they're effectively stateless. 
And for many of them, they've made such a tough journey coming here that they don't want to go back. They see their future here in Europe. Lorenzo has hired a room in one of Catania's upmarket hotels for the movement's Defend Europe launch. But there are complications. Plainclothes policemen have turned up and are keen to make their presence felt. They question Lorenzo, suspecting someone in the town's port may be passing information on migrant shipping. We're losing our safety, our way of life, and we will become a minority in our own country. Riaccendere la luce? Perfetto. Va bene. La seconda cosa dimostra che si può davvero incidere sul piano concreto in questa maniera. Allora la cosa si può fare, si può fare, noi ne abbiamo dato la prova. Does that mean you'll keep trying to stop the boats? Yeah, of course, we are ready to, to face our problems, these kind of problems. Even today, you were approached by police. I mean, they are watching you. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But Why do you we, smile? We, have, we have our channels to, to keep this, this kind of thing secret. You know, the website, internet, is a gift. We can, we can talk there, we can organize these kind of things uh, in almost total freedom. And this will help us a lot. It's estimated that this year a quarter of a million migrants will make the perilous journey from Libya to Italy. Several thousand will drown on the way. While this crisis continues, so too will criticism of the humanitarian effort and the message of intolerance. And a solution? No end in sight. The ship comes into the port of Trapani in Sicily. It's where a local prosecutor is investigating whether some NGO ships may be facilitating illegal immigration. I credo che questo sia uno dei problemi più gravi che nella storia dell'umanità si sia verificato forse dal Medioevo ad oggi. Chiunque dica che è di facile soluzione secondo me è quanto meno superficiale in molti casi è in mala fede the ngo missions are coordinated by the italian coast guard but the country's legal system has launched two investigations into whether they're saving lives or merely assisting illegal immigrants on their journey il loro scopo un... assisting illegal immigrants on their journey il loro scopo unico è umanitario, salvare le vite umane. Questo comporta a volte delle condotte che sono violatrici di leggi nazionali. Do you feel that by rescuing these boats that the NGOs are somehow encouraging uh, the people smuggling trade? Certamente sì. E spinge i trafficanti a imbarcare questi immigrati su imbarcazioni sempre più fatiscenti, poco sicure, perché hanno la certezza che dopo poche miglia saranno recuperate dalle navi. There are critics who have accused NGOs of acting as a taxi service to Europe. Io la penso così. <coughs> the NGOs argue that if they weren't operating in the area, more lives would be lost. E comunque ne morirebbero molti di più di quanti non ne muoiono attualmente. 